All right, welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about how to integrate the Meta Conversions API on your Webflow website. Uh, there's three things we're going to see in this video. First of all, how to set up the purchase event to be able to send the item price, the quantity, and also the total amount. The reason why you want to send all these informations as well uh, is because in your Facebook dashboard, you want to be able to have all the necessary information to take your decisions. Uh, so you have to have your purchase conversions value, you have to have your ROAS, um, the number of website purchases, so that's why the purchase event, you have to be careful with it, you have to set it up correctly. Uh, all the other events are pretty standard and easy to set up. And uh, third of all, we're going to see how to associate a URL to an event. So for example, you want to associate a visit to your thank you page uh, to a lead event. right? So let's say somebody arrives on your thank you page after signing up in a form, you want to send through the conversions API to your Facebook dashboard that you got a lead event. Uh, just quickly, why you want to integrate the conversions API on Webflow? First of all, you're going to invest 20 to 30 percent less on ad spend while keeping the same revenue, right? The pixel has more data, and your ad budget is spent more precisely, right? Your ad budget is not trying to do some wild stuff here and there. You're feeding him quality data so he knows where to spend your budget. Second of all, you want to gather data in your dashboard to scale or cut ads, test your creatives, really important. And the third point, uh, copy pasting your pixel ID in your Webflow settings is kind of useless. You know, since iOS 14, uh, browser events are kind of difficult, you know, to, to, to get them to arrive to your dashboard. So you really need the Conversions API in 2024, 2025. So right now, the only way to integrate the Conversions API on your Webflow website is with an application. Uh, if you go to Webflow homepage uh, and click on platform, you're going to see apps. You can click on apps. And once you arrive on the page, you can type Pixelflow. There you go, Pixelflow, Facebook Conversions API, and Multipixel. Uh, there's also this Multipixel feature that's super important because you're going to be able to uh, install multiple pixels on your website because let's say, for example, you get one account banned or one ad account, one business manager banned. If you have multiple pixels in different business managers or different ad accounts, uh, since you have those pixels installed in the website, they're gonna be able to gather all the data at the same time. So if you get banned somewhere, you still have another pixel ready to fire, uh, ready to go and super, super trained with all the data. So that's super important, that's amazing actually. Um, and this is, a, this is an app that my team has developed because we needed this for ourselves, right? And for our clients, like people used to ask me like, how do I, integrated conversions, conversions API and I didn't have an answer like I needed this as well there's um, there's the Facebook partner uh, panel there's the uh, Google Google tracking but there's some stuff you can't do with with Google Analytics and Google tracking uh, there's you know all these kind of solutions that never really fitted my vision and what I wanted to do on my websites so that's why I built this with exactly what all web flowers needed for their website okay so let's install this together Let's say I want to add the application to my website, try Pixelflow. I'm going to authorize app and install. All right, so once you arrive on your page, uh, you can click on apps and open the app. And you're going to have to enter a connection code. It's actually very easy. You can just click on start your free trial to generate one. And then you arrive on the website. Uh, so obviously, you have a seven day free trial. You can come here and start your seven day free trial. I'm just going to create an account quickly and see you in a couple of seconds. So I have created my account. Uh, I'm in my dashboard now and I can just generate a connection code. It's generated. I can just copy and paste it in my website. There you go. And I can log in. The first thing you want to do, this is really important. You want to copy this code first, right? Before doing anything, I know you're excited to, you know, install your pixels. You have to copy this code and uh, go to your site settings and copy it in your head code. So as you can see, I have installed my uh, my script and uh, it's in the head code in my custom code settings in Webflow. The only thing I want to talk about is the currency. All right, so if you have a e-commerce website or you're selling some kind of course, you want to use the currency that you have in your country. Let's say you're in Canadian, you can use CAD. If you're in uh, Europe, you can use EUR for euros, or you can use USD if it's in US dollars, and you can save the code and publish your website. All right, so now I want to start from scratch. I have no pixels, no URLs, uh, no tracking, no whatsoever. Uh, so let's install our first pixel and do our first test. The first thing we want to do is head to your Meta Business Suite. Um, 
let me actually guide you from the beginning. You wanna click on settings. You know, this is the B Facebook Business Manager. I assume you're, you're pretty familiar with Facebook Pixels at this point. Uh, you can click on settings and in your settings, you wanna go to data sources and go to data sets. So basically this is all your pixels. We're gonna create one just for the sake of the, of the example. Um, so let's say uh, YouTube example I create. So there you go, you have it, YouTube example. This is my pixel. And you just wanna to head to uh, the events manager so you can open this. Let's see what are the informations that we need when I wanna add my pixel. First of all, I have my pixel name. I can just put whatever, just put the same thing. YouTube example. Now I need the Facebook pixel ID. You're gonna find your pixel Facebook ID in here. You can copy, paste it. And now I need an access token. So let's see where I can find my access token. Uh, you can go to settings and we're gonna scroll down a bit. You're gonna find it here. In setup direct integration, you can generate an access token. You can click to copy to clipboard and paste it directly in your app. Obviously we wanna to toggle test pixel, right? We, we wanna test and make sure that all or events um, you know, are, are sending correctly or firing correctly through the conversions API. So we can toggle this and we need a test events code. So let's take a look at the test events tab here. All right, you can click on this first um, you know, section here and copy your test events code, paste it, there you go. Now we can add our first pixel. Now what you want to do is publish your website. All right, so now let's take a look at how we actually map everything in your website, how we associate events to buttons or fields or pages or whatever. Let's take a look at the website. So you want to head over to tripixelflow.com and you want to go to classes documents for Webflow. So don't mind Framer. Uh, this application is, is coming soon for Framer as well. So you, we just want to say stay inside Webflow and we have something called classes document. Let's say I want to use initiate checkout, all right? There you go, you have a class name actually, you know, action button by 004 pixel flow. You can copy this to the clipboard and we're gonna add this to the button that we want to associate to this event, right? So initiate checkout. So just for the sake of the example, I'm gonna go quickly here and let's say that my start free trial button is the initiate checkout event for me. So I wanna go here and paste my class and I'm gonna publish my website. Great, so let's go to the live version of my website. We're gonna scroll down to pricing. And what's supposed to happen now is that if we click on the start a seven day free trial, we have to get the initiate checkout event in our test events log, all right? So let me go through this with you. Uh, first of all, in our test events log, as you can see, we have already received the view content event, right? Receive from server, so this is good. Manual setup at 11.35, and it's 11.35 right now, PM. Uh, now we wanna click on the start a seven day free trial, and we wanna see if we're gonna get the initiate checkout um, event. So let's click on this. Great, so I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna come back to my events log. We're gonna wait a couple seconds. It usually takes around 10 to 15 seconds. So this is a good benchmark if you're doing this at the same time as you're watching this video. There you go, initiate checkout. So we have received this event and it's as simple as this. This is actually how it works. Um, it takes a little bit more uh, time to set up the purchase event, but it's as simple, right? It's just adding classes to your fields to your divs and to containers. We're gonna try to do one for purchase right now, but it, don't worry, it's very, very simple. All right, so this is a demo website. So to set up the purchase event in Webflow, you're gonna see that um, you have, there you go, you have the purchase event. So you can copy to clipboard, uh, you know, for the, for the purchase button. All right, so let's say for the sake of the example that this is our final purchase button, right? So once the user clicks on this button, uh, they're gonna be uh, charged uh, an amount on their credit card. And I wanna place, you know, let me delete this. And I wanna paste my event. So this is you know, exactly the, the same one. Action button place order 18. 
and this is the one that I have here for my Facebook event name action button place order 18 great now let's head back to the classes document and see if we can improve the data that we send to the conversions API if we can send more data for example we have a price here we have the name of the product so I want to be able to send all this data to uh, through the conversions API so actually after this whole section you have a smaller section called additional classes and you have one for the purchase event um, and there's six steps the first two are mandatory and the other ones are not mandatory because let's say for example you do not have a quantity you don't need uh, to apply this to item quantity let's say you're selling an ebook uh, if you don't have a quantity it's okay uh, if you want to just um, map this event uh, actually you just want to map this information the total amount you can just do this one right you can just do this one uh, but the first two are mandatory let me show you what's going on first of all you want to apply this class to the main container containing all the checkout items right so let's say you have all the checkout items and you have a main container it could be a div block whatever uh, a main div and everything is inside of it you want to apply this right here all right info check item container pf and it's all actually already there it's supposed to be there so let's say this is my bigger div as you can see here with the indentation you have a bigger div here and here you go you can see it it's there i'm gonna delete do it again just for the purpose of the video info check item container pf and the second step is to apply this to the container containing item information basically is just the div that's inside the bigger div um, so it's mandatory it's just like this uh, you can just create a, div, a bigger div and then just a smaller div inside and have everything inside of that second div uh, you can just copy this you have the second div so this is the name of my product I want to copy this info item name I can copy and this is my item price right 344 you can see IFO item price and uh, IFO item price there you go so this is just the only information that I have is the only thing I need I can just publish this website and let's see if we actually get the purchase event in our test events manager so now we're on the live website let me just click on purchase uh, and let's see if we get the event let's just wait a couple seconds and there you go we have the purchase event this is exactly what we needed now let's try to set up some other you know easier to set up events um, we can go back to the classes document and let's say I just want to set up the add to cart event this time All right, I can copy to clipboard go back to my website I have an add to cart button here I already have the event let me just copy paste it again just for the purpose of the video I'm gonna publish again and once it's published I'm gonna go to the live version I'm gonna refresh quickly and click on add to cart now let's see if we have the add to cart event in our test events log again there you go we're gonna wait a couple seconds so we got the view content event we got the purchase event let's see if we have the add to cart event it's currently even 1149 and there you go 1148 1148 we got the view content and the add to cart event all right so now you have all um, the necessary information to you know quite literally um, set up any event that you want inside of Webflow um, the only two that maybe you're gonna have to to uh, to be careful with is the find location event uh, there's one class for the find location input and there's one class for the find location button all right in additional classes you have the additional classes for the purchase event and you also have additional classes uh, for your forms right so let's say you have you have forms and you want to map all the information uh, let's say you have add payment info complete registration you have a lead you know whatever kind of form you have um, and you want to associate an event to this again you want to apply this class to the form container or the webflow form element you want to apply this to the value or price if you're selling something through your form you want to apply this to the name input uh, this to the last name input uh, you want to apply this to the email input and you want to apply this to the phone input okay as simple as that here you go now the only thing that is left to see how we can use the tracking url feature so let me delete this real quick and we're going to do a quick test together all right so now if we want to test the 
tracking URL event, you know, basically associating a visit to a page to an event that's, that's going to be fired to a business manager. Um, I created a quick form here in the demo website. And let's say that each time somebody fills this form and he clicks on submit, he's going to be redirected to a thank you page. Now I want that each time somebody arrives on the thank you page, I want to send a lead event to my Facebook manager. So the way to do this is to actually take your thank you page uh, URL, you want to control C and it, it could be whatever, right? It could be uh, like a, like a confirmation page after a purchase. It can be uh, a confirmation page after a donation. You choose your event, right? I'm just giving an example with a thank you page after filling a form. Uh, so I can, I can uh, copy this URL and go back to my website. I'm going to open my app card again and show you how the feature works. You can add a URL. It's actually pretty simple. You can uh, paste it and select the event you want. So here I want the lead event. The only thing you have to be very careful, right? So a lot of people uh, made this mistake in the past. I've got plenty of messages, uh, you know, for support. When you add a URL, you have to copy the code, uh, the application code again and paste it in your head code, right? So we're going to do this right away. I'm going to close this and I'm going to go to my dashboard, uh, actually my site settings. So now I have copied my code again in my head code and I can go back safely to my uh, website. I can open my app card again and there you go. You have the lead event set up here for this URL. I can close, publish my website and let's do a quick test on the live version. Great, let's go to homepage. So as you can see in the events manager, we just have a couple of view contents uh, events. We have the add to cart and purchase that we did earlier. We don't have a lead event yet. So let's see if we can get it, right? So the user comes, he enters his name, he enters his email address, he's gonna submit the form. Once he submits, he's gonna arrive on this page, thank you page, uh, and then he can go back to home and let's see if that worked and if we got the lead event. So it's 2356. I'm gonna wait maybe a couple of seconds. Uh, there you go, lead at 2356, 1156 p.m. And this is on the, another view content because we got back to the homepage right after the, th the, the, the uh, thank you page. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I just wanna show you quickly on the website. If you wanna send me a message, you can contact me through WhatsApp. So I'm always available, uh, I'm gonna text you on my phone. Super close relation, you know, I don't mind. Uh, and um, yeah, or you can contact me by email. So I hope, uh, I hope this tutorial helped you and I hope you have a good day. Thanks a lot.